if we're trying to mass something, if we're trying to build some objects, then the slab tool tends to be the best tool for that because it's the easiest to work with, it's the easiest to manipulate. Now, if we want to create something that's organic, then we could use the morph tool, but I often will find that it's easier to create a slab first and then we can convert it to a morph. If we're creating organic shapes, like circles, obviously it's harder to draw slabs in circles, but we have to remember that we have the magic wand. And so the intention of the magic wand is we can define any shape with a two-dimensional form and then insert a slab into it. So at least in plan, if it's organic, that can be easier. And then if it's organic in 3D, or it's a little bit harder, but I guess the point is we're talking about massing. So we can either convert it to a morph and then make it more detailed, or it just can be a block. It doesn't need to be much more complicated than that. So let's assume that we're going to create stepped circles, like creating clouds, if you like. So we're going to use a slab, and I'm going to make them a meter high, just for fun, just to keep the math and explanation simple. And we're going to use a reference plane on the bottom to make sense of this the most. So we, when we're using slabs, we can create it in a few different ways. The way I like to think about it, if we're creating a floor slab, generally I'll use the top surface as the reference plane. And if we're creating massing, or if we're creating joinery, or volumes, or anything like that, I'll nearly always start with the bottom and work our way up, like we do with walls, because it just sort of makes a bit more sense, makes the math maybe a little bit simpler. And for now, I just want to make sure I override all of my model surfaces, select so they're all grouped, and for now we're just going to use the glass blue. We could use anything we want, but for now we'll just use the glass blue. Press OK, and now I can magic wand, so I define my space. Now the only thing I'll add to this, just to make it even clearer, is we'll add a cover fill. And I'll make that cover fill just a 25% probably, and a color could be yellow, could be whatever I want it to be, just so it's easier to see. And I know that I've placed it. Now as I continue to do this, I don't want to click inside the circle, because that's going to define, as we can see with the blue outline, it's defining the space left over. In this case, I want to make full circles. So I need to magic on the actual line that will define the shape and allow me to place that over the top of the other one. So we actually have an overlap. Now if that was the same height then they will intersect and in this instance I don't really want them to intersect. What I wanted to do is sit above so I'm going to type in a thousand so that's sitting a thousand higher. Now I'll pick up the setting alt of this one, click. Now it's pretty easy because I'm using a thousand as my maths so I could just keep increasing the size of that, or the other way of doing it would be to use the Elevate tool, and when I use the Elevate tool in Plan, it just allows me to type in a number and click. So once I've done that once, if I can then pick up the setting again, Inject, and then Elevate, it's already there, I just type in, press Enter. So I can do the same thing with Multiply. If I wasn't drawing them each time, if I was instead saying drag multiple copies or multiply, I could multiply with an elevation. So every time I drag to copy, I could elevate it. So that would be another way of maybe making that process even easier if I wanted to. But we're almost finished. Elevate 1000. So now, if I'm to view this all in 3D, let's fly into the model, and to view this better, we're going to go out of our white model now into our detailed shading. I don't really care about shadows. So go into our detail shading and we'll fly into the building. I'll fly over the other side. So moving forward, holding shift, shift allows me to go faster. Otherwise, if I let go of shift, I go slow. So let's fly around and we want to enter through here. So now I can see how these slabs are working. So just with glass, I'll move back so I'm on the edge that's already clearish, but maybe it's a little bit too transparent. So that's making it maybe harder to understand. So what could I do? I could create different surfaces, still having some transparency, but maybe using color to help make it easier to see. So let's start with this glass blue. So I'm Alt, pick up the selections of this, Options, Element, Attributes. What do I want? 
we used to call it materials, it's now called surfaces. I could use building materials, but in this case I've overridden. So building materials isn't really justified. I don't really care about quantifying them, and even if I did, I could still do that with a surface. So I'm not going to do a building material, I'm just going to create new surfaces. Because I alt selected, that's brought that one to the front, as in that's the one that's been chosen. And from here I can create a new, I will go new by duplicate, duplicate this glass, and I could rename these, I could call them glass if I wanted to, or I could create a new category, I'll call it massing, and I'll make this one yellow, change the colour, Now we can just use this pinwheel, or we could use pencils, or, or whatever it is in order to make it easy to find what we're after. And then the one that I like here a lot is attenuation. By boosting the attenuation, we can leave the transparency in the middle, we can make it a lot higher, which will make that more see-through. When we do that, we see what I'm talking about. When we boost the attenuation, we can see through the middle of something, but the edges get a little bit more... Uh, opaque or less transparent and that just makes it sometimes easier to read when we're talking about organic shapes. If we're trying to do a sphere and we have no attenuation it just looks like a circle, it doesn't look three-dimensional so this helps it to look three-dimensional. We can boot, we can reduce that a little bit and it will still work with what we're trying to achieve. Now we've only done this in basic which means it will work in 3D so I can press OK, I can click on one or all of these, go into the settings, go to override, and now I want to find massing yellow. So that's already changed colour in 3D. Now what would be the problem if I wanted to render this, it's not going to render the right colour because I haven't overridden the Cine render surface setting. So I'd need to go options, element attributes, sorry, options, element attributes, surfaces, into our Cine render, and we see that it's still going to be blue. So if I didn't want it to be blue, if I wanted it to be yellow, I'd need to go Match Settings, Update Cine Render from Basic, and that's going to change that to yellow. Now if that is too transparent, of course we can do that here. So we don't need to necessarily go back to our 3D setting. In here we can say, mm, uh, the brightness, it's too, it's too bright, so let's reduce that down so it's not so bold. We can change the reflectance as well, take down brightness there. And this is going to give us a, a different view, a different representation. Now if we're doing this, we're editing our settings in our Cine Render engine, then we probably want to do it the other way. Update basic settings from Cine Render settings. So we're going backwards now and if I change that back to the basic we see that it's now edited here. So we started with 66 or something like that uh, and now we're reduced down to 56 not based on changing the settings here but changing the settings in our Cine Render and we'd see that the reflectance and shininess has changed as well. Now we see that these sliders are very different from Cine Render the Cine Render ones are much more powerful, have a lot more possibilities. So ideally, if we're going to uh, make better surfaces, we're going to do it there. But if we're not really concerned about Cine Render, because maybe we're going to be exporting it into something else, at least getting it to look right in the model for now is our purpose. Now once we've done this one, we're happy with the result that we've got. Of course, we can create more. We can duplicate this now, and we can create some different colours. Duplicate blue green. Move that one. So I haven't updated those settings in my Cine render, but I really don't care. It's fine. So now I can go and change these. I'm just using these colors just for something to show you. It doesn't mean anything in this case, but of course if you were trying to represent different areas or things that did overlap or intersect, then using different colors is going to make them much more identifiable for you. So 
So by creating different colors, now we could continue this pattern if we wanted to. <laughs> yep, yellow and red. So this now just gives us a bit more visual to understand. Now we're in our ArchiCAD model, we're not in BIMX, so it won't climb up on top of these stairs for me, but of course I can do this myself. I can fly through it just by looking up as I move, and the, the color just helps me to understand a little bit more about how the volumes work. And of course I can do this just to visualize the space or at any time I might say okay I I like that idea but it needs refining or because this was mass but I actually need to make this a lot more uh, conceptual again I could create that as a screenshot or again I could go back into a 3d document and create a sketch looking drawing of this which I can then manipulate and, and make it work in a more fluid way so this is just a massing process to help us design, to help us work. And at any point, if we decide that it's not giving us the results that we're after, of course, we can change it quickly. And the intention of massing is just that. We don't want to lock ourselves into a particular design or a particular solution. We want to do something that's very quick and then give ourselves the freedom to make any changes.